names in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shrap my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The how we gonna... Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be showing you how to use Ista Plus or Ista D if you want to call it on the F series and this is only for F series. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go through all the list of the service functions, the modules, and I'm going to tell you which one is and what each one does in turn and for you to be able to diagnose your car and know, know what each function is on the service function. Now, as you're aware, Ista Plus can also update the F series via Ista Plus, so you don't have to come out of it to go to Ista P or use Wink FP. So I'm gonna plug it all up to the F series. We're gonna show you how to use it, and then we're just gonna go through the service functions. We won't be actuating anything because nothing needs really testing. I doubt any fault codes are gonna come up, but we'll be surprised if they do. If they do, then we can address them while we're here. So let's see if any fault codes come up, and I'm gonna show you all the service functions. So let's crack on and show you how to use Ista Plus and the service functions on the F series. So, the first thing you can see here is I'm going to read out vehicle data. And what we're going to do is we're going to complete the identification so we can pick up the icon. That's first and foremost. Now, when it picks up the icon, there's the VIN number. We're just going to click accept. And now, the reason I want to show you guys this is because a lot of people will get confused. The moment this opens, it starts asking you if you want to update the car. You really have to think before even clicking it to decline the measure plans or your car update now. There's been many people messaging me saying that they got scared. That ended up happening. They clicked accept and then ripped the cable out of their car. You could not be doing that. Now, as you can see here, it's got faults in the ZGM. Nobody's ever scanned this. It's got faults there already. Now, it still will tell us what the faults are for. When we go through it, let's see what it brings up. This is interesting. Now, it's going to read the vehicle contact. But the good thing is the DME is green, gearbox is green. All the other modules are green. <clears throat> now you have to be careful here because I believe it's reading out all the vehicle's information and you have to be careful that this doesn't end up trying to do the updates on the car, detect an update and try and update it. <clears throat> so we'll leave this to do and then we'll come right back. As you can see, it's got three in a fault memory. So we'll come back once it's finished reading the vehicle context. Okay guys, so now that's the complete, it's finally read the vehicle context. What you're gonna wanna go to is go to display fault memory. And as you can see, it just says functional limitation of connected drive head unit, synchronization process for the FlexRay fail. FlexRay is the new network they all run on now on the F-Series, which is completely different to the most network which they used to have. Welcome lights, repeat lock active. So that's just telling you about that. Now, service functions. So, as you can see, this is a diesel, but it relates for all cars. If you're a petrol, you see petrol or DME electronics. So in this one, you can do all the adjustment and increment wheel, which will <clears throat> basically adjust all the settings on the car if you replace a part. Same for the adjustment functions on the activating teaching for angular offset between crankshaft and camshaft, because obviously, as you know, it uses the work stop start. Consumption calculation, idle speed, which will increase your idle. Injection quantity compensation if you need to check the injectors, to see if they're injecting at the right time. Learning glow elements, and that will be there for the glow plugs and for the DPF to make sure it's regening properly. Your start up of the fuel pump, so you want to make sure the fuel pump's starting up to obviously be able to start the car because it runs on diesel, so it needs the fuel pump. Automatic engine start-stop start stop function now. You can deactivate that if you really wanted to. You can also can deactivate it on the car just by moving the shifter over to the left and stopping it, um, and that will deactivate as well. Now that are, I would recommend deactivating, deactivate because that will just knacker your starter motor. It's designed to control the amount of pollution, and that's why they switch it off during the city or when you're stopped in traffic, but you don't need it on. Um, just turn the bloody thing off and then obviously you can do a system check to check if it's actually working but again it's not something you need to do coasting so obviously for coasting you can do a system check on that to see if the engine's coasting diesel particulate filter so there's your answer already as I told you you'd have to register a new particular filter to the car um, on these because obviously as you know they need everything being registered you can't just go and buy a new one that's to stop people cutting them off and then just managing to go and get another one from the scrapyard. So now they want you to register it. So that's another thing you have to do. You've got the regeneration of the diesel particulate filter in case it gets clogged and your glow plugs start working, which they know is going to happen in years to come. Sometimes it even happens on new cars. Exhaust gas recirculation valve 
the installation position. So that's another one. Now, that is for if to check the position of the EGR valve. For instance, so you can see if the piston gets clogged or shut or stopped in, in any way. Now the next one is expert mode. Now, <clears throat> expert mode is, as you see, air mass acquisition expert mode, expert mode engine torque. So this is all to increase everything on the car. So for instance, you can increase the idle speed temporarily, the OBD readiness code so they can ready up all the sensors to see if all the sensors that are meant to ready up when a car starts, if they're working. Radiator blind, so open and close the radiator blind because the radiators on these have got blinds that open and close to allow it to cool down and to heat up um, due to inside the cabin for the climate control system. You also got the adaptions that you can reset. You guys know what that one is already. You can reset the adapter for the gearbox, the learning curve, how many owners you might buy a car with three, four owners. Everyone drives a BMW differently, so it's another thing you've got to just do. Reset correction values of the injectors. If they're not firing correctly, you can reset them and try and get them to fire properly. SCR system. So activate recirculating pump unit. Now, obviously, as you guys know, recirculating pump unit is for the diesel, which circulates it around this engine because, as you know, it comes from the fuel tank itself through the middle back to the high pressure fuel pump and back round again and recirculates that's the whole point of any kind of fuel you can also display of the fuel tank level initialization of the scr tank system reset start prevented by scr system reset scr control unit installation mode catalytic converter replacement system adjustments and adaptions so if you make any kind of changes to your exhaust or your dpf system you'll have to use these functions to sort it all out this is how complicated this car can actually be and this is why I've said to you in previous videos why you need to have ISTA for this kind of car. There is a lot of sensors on this car. And as you're seeing, everything needs to be coded and programmed and checked. Smooth running control, as I said to you, let's check your injectors and see how the car's running if we're running. Miss Ryan, because as you know, diesels can run perfectly even with a injector on the way out. Ventilation is for bleeding the fuel system and ventilation for the cooling system to learn how to bleed the cooling system as well. So it's very easy on these. They're back to having a valve to bleed the system, not like the old on the 60s engine start you've got to register the starter exchange as you can see there now register reset the starter lock as you know e60 had the problem where the starter lock was going out the elv electronic steering lock it was locking up people were removing the module but as you can see now you even have to register a starter motor that's how bad it's got you can't even just change the starter motor without registering it transfer box so repair and calibration that's for the vtg as you know the car is four wheel drive now it's x drive so that's to do the calibration on it which you have to do if you was to code or program any of the gearbox on this via any other software apart from mr p you will need to recode the um, vtg which is the four wheel drive system which is the transfer box for the four wheel drive system transmission control unit 8 hp tu adjustment which will be all your calibration reset adaptions transmission oil, oil balancing Chassis and suspension, this will be all your dynamic stuff, electromechanical power steering, capacitor box, register change. As you can see there, you have to even register that to the, to the system. EPS steering startup on this as well, which is electronic power steering startup. Adjustment of the ICM sensor system, which is the integrated chassis management, which controls all the car when you're steering. As you know, it's got dynamic steering, so as for that, initialization of the SWW sensor system, which is lane change warning. So that's for the lane changing. Adjustment of that is on startup, ride height adjustment. Well, I don't know if this car's got ride height sensors, but if it has, even better. But there you go, it needs another thing. Startup rotor position for the HSR traction control system, as you'll see there. You've got the tr adjustment of the ICM sensor again, brake bleeding routine brake line mix up test so you can check if you've mixed up the brake lines dsc control unit adjustment vertical dynamics management on the body side we now have additional functions which will be showroom mode complete showroom mode automatic tailgate operation central gateway module initialize the flex ray flex ray system is what they use on e60 it hasn't changed instrument cluster self test restore delivery status so on the head unit you can restore it to delivery mode Save Ethernet configuration and update online services. Heating and air conditioning drain and fill up refrigerant circuit. Flap motors on the flaps itself. Flap motor calibration run initialization built on position flap installation position of flap motors. Red rest flap motors. 
as you see here guys this is a very complicated car it's not like the e-series there is a lot more to it adjust under voltage limit of the independent auxiliary heater running protection for the ac tele start transmitter which will be your bluetooth on the car lighting we have auto addressing of the light source of limb bus ride height adjustment teaching front light electronic turn signals power window regulator so that's the probably teaching your anti-trap feature initialized power window drive remote key block and enable it slide tilt sunroof the most circuit so you'll see there we've got the most circuit as well on here rain and light sensor safety functions which will be lock the airbag motor driven belt retractor seat adjustment so it's got motor driven belt retractors on this but this one doesn't have that configuration of the memory switch for rear passenger compartment telecommunications update on, and then you've got voltage supply obviously battery will need to be registered as it always does on all these cars since the e60 you can see there driver assistance active cruise control try pressure control which is to annoy everybody on the e series this is for the run flats if they burst you've got that light's going to come on integrated rdc pressure coding wheel electronic measured as you see here everything's electronic on these cars the maintenance as you see here battery charging or trickle charging via diagnostic socket now as you see here enabling navigation maps automatic enabling reset the cbs which we don't have to do check control messages so as you see there you see all those control messages remote door locking command unlocking command so you can check if the doors are going up and down bmw mobile group device and that's just for everything if a mobile technician was to go out with this they would know where to look and then you've got the teleservice function so the energy diagnosis and the remote software update if you needed to do it so in function structure if we go into here you can click certain things on the car if you get a certain fault you can then just detect it here so as you can see here this is the current faults that you can see here straight away these are all the faults that people have been reporting that are on this start oil pressure stop the vehicle carefully call it level too low engine stops problem starting engine msa or electric driving not available notice regarding current fault patterns rough run, engine running after cold start the engine shakes jerks after the cold start wrong or poor fuel quality now usually you can click one of them and it will tell you what's wrong with the car if someone wants to come into you and say to you or you're having these exact symptoms just click on it and tell you what to do now you can just go here and for instance you can just click on function structure what problem you're having so if it's accelerate pedal you'll click accelerate pedal if it's someone to do the oil supply you'll put oil pressure control and you'll put that in and it will detect the problem out of all the things you're picking what faults you've got you just go through and pick each fault in turn so you can move accelerator pedal say your accelerator is responding then you go to misfire detection and put misfire in there say it's not fun and it will tell you what exactly wrong with the car now if we go back to vehicle information as you'll see here i've showed you before if we go to the dde now this is what i wanted to show you on the dde if we call up the ecu functions which i just want to show you You'll see now we'll be able to speak to the ECU and as you can see here, we can see all the software information, which is right there. And you can do component triggering, component triggering. So if you can do control, you can trigger whatever you really want to do. We can do a diagnostic scan, diagnosis request, and you can do the engine speed, idle speed and everything else in the DME. Now they're limited to what you can and can't do at the moment. So you can check the air ducts, all the things that are common to go, electric fan, and that's all they have in here at the moment in the DME, which I'm very surprised. The EGS, on the other hand, may have a lot. Let's see what the REM is. So the REM will be the rear electronic module, the HKF and tailgate function, FZD, roof functioning, IHK climate control, combi cluster, top hi-fi amplifier, it's got Logic 7, frontal light electronics, HJH, head unit high, so that's the basically I drive okay, MBT if you want to call it, front electronic module, central gateway module. So the central gateway module C controls all the electronics to all the modules. That's the main module that they all run off of. So as you see, the, the central gateway module controls them a lot. You've got the SCR selective catalytic reduction. That's what SCR stands for. Crash safety module, gear selector switch. So obviously as you know on these, these have got a normal switch. So on this one, I just want to show you a function. You can run in general. I believe look locate a line release or manual shift gate now what you can do there you can release the gear shifter if you need to release it because you need to get it in drive and the car ain't starting or you can't start the car you can release it manu manually so then that way you can just roll the car uh, you can do the functional display on there to see if it's all working on the cluster you can also check the lighting as well as i say the items are very limited you guys got to remember this is a 2019 model um 
I've we're still waiting to get the updates for this car. It's still brand brand new, so it's not got everything yet, and uh, not put everything available that what you can do on this car just yet. But as you can see here, you know how you can go and control unit list, and you can see all the modules here as well. It is quite easy to use. It's stable, like I said, for this car. You guys have seen it yourself. I would not advise um, using this car without ISTA or even buying this car. So as you see here guys, like I said, it, it, you, this is one car you've just seen now, you must use ISTA for. These cars are so high on electronics that without it, you will not be able to even run these cars because you'll be in the dealers. Because as you see, everything needs registering, everything needs coding. You cannot get away anymore with just replacing a part. You have to register the part constantly. A normal scanner is not going to do that. This is why ISTA is your best cause of justice, even for showing the faults. Like a normal scanner wouldn't show them kind of faults because they're not relevant. But for us, it does show them and like, they would be faults I would fix. But on a normal little cheap scanner, it would only show you faults in the DME and things. It would never show you Ds on the tree. So... I hope you've enjoyed this video guys and that's the it's the plus showing you how to use it's the plus on the f series and what everything means on the so as you've seen there guys i've just showed you how to use it's the plus on the f series this is the new f36 um i hope you've enjoyed this video guys like i said if you do get stuck or you need questions or any kind of questions regarding the software or any sort you can get in contact with me the email address is in my about section if not just leave a comment in my box below i'll try and reply to you with my email address or if you have any questions regarding it or you need help with something, please let me know. Like I say, there's new modules fitted all the time to newer cars. It's 2019. Like I said to you, it's something even I'm still learning about. I'm preparing to get a bench ready for the F-Series as well. We are going to be having that. Like I say, E-System is a lot easier to use than ISTA. I just wanted to show you guys how you can diagnose your car. Because as you've seen, there's a lot of stuff that if you do buy one of these cars, you have to register them from the DPF. And that goes not just for the diesels. Please be advised, guys, this is for the petrols as well. Any part you buy has to be registered to the car now. You can't do that with normal software. You really can't. Now, a lot of people are giving these cars bad name because of this, but realistically, if you've got the correct software, it's not going to ever be a problem for you. It's if you don't have the software, this is where it's all going to be a problem. You're going to spend a lot of money at the dealers getting everything registered. But bearing in mind, these cars are new. It's new technology. They're trying to make everything very robotic, electronic, so you have to rely on the dealers, you have to rely on software. It's not going to be as easy as it was many, many years ago with the old BMW 30. It's now gone to this and it's what we have to adjust to. You have to come up with the times. You can't be left in the past. Uh, these cars are nice. They're very nice cars to drive, as I told you in previous videos. And they're very easy to diagnose if you understand them. It the, gives you everything you need to know. It tells you what the fault is, even walks you through a test plan if you're not sure. And tests everything for you to make sure it's failed before you go and replace that part. Now that's an excellent program for it. I advise using that over any kind of cheap scanners. You cannot beat ISTA. Snap-on cannot do what ISTA can. It's a fact. No other snack scanner can do it. With BMW, you have to use BMW dealer software. It's a fact. The same with Mercedes, you have to use Mercedes diagnostics. No other scanner can do what that one can. The same with Volkswagen and Audi. And I'm telling you for BMW, if you're thinking of using a cheap scanner, don't. Cheap scanners will not show the codes like this will. Like I said, it will mislead you, and I get this all the time, people using cheap scanners, then coming to me with P codes, and then they wonder why their problem ain't getting resolved. Them scanners will not find a problem immediately. It can't walk you through a test plan. It can't let you trigger things to see what's wrong with it, and that's where you'll be left behind, and your car will get worse and progressively worse because you're not sorting the problem quick enough. Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's BMW Dr. Dini. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave it a thumbs up, and until next time, guys, Goodbye.